You do say um, the delivery numbers were jaw-dropping, hard to poke holes in, and a major feather in the cap of the Bulls on Monday morning. Look, this was what I call almost a trophy case quarter because 275 was really what I thought the top of the bull case in terms of what they could hit. We think it was 200,000 alone that they delivered in the month of December. You look at the trajectory now between China as well as globally going forward. I mean, we could be looking now 1.5, 1.6 million units for 2022. And that's why it just continues to be that scale and scope what we're seeing in Tesla beyond, you know, what even the bull case. The haters will continue to hate, but you look at these numbers, I think gives a lot of momentum in 2022. Yeah. Some of your peers on the street are arguing maybe two million, Dan, is possible for the year. Um, maybe a, a stretch target, but one that looks a lot more realistic given uh, this print. Yeah, I mean, if you look at specifically the run rate in China, you know, two million, it, it's not out of the zone in terms of what they could ultimately hit. And then you think about the chip shortage. That took out, in our opinion, probably about twenty five to 30,000 units in the quarter. So you start to add that with the chip shortage easing into first half of the you know, 2022. And I think this is really just the start of what I view as almost the next leg of the Tesla story. And just importantly, that gross margin story and the profitability, that's what I believe is going to be a big part of and we have a base case 1400, bull case 1800. Speaking of the next leg of the Tesla story, Dan, what do you think uh, could be a surprise for investors this year? Does it happen around FSD, full self driving risk, perhaps as well, opportunity? Yeah, it's a great question. I think two things. First, Austin and Berlin getting on board is key because that, that ultimately could double capacity over the next year. I think it's going to be about battery technology. I mean, I think you start to really significantly lower the cost. That's going to be just more and more of a margin benefit for Tesla. So expect another battery day for Tesla. And you look at that competitive moot. We don't view this as a zero-sum game. I and mean, there's a green tide away, $5 trillion of opportunity over the next decade. But Tesla, you get the supercharger network battery technology and that scale, that continues to differentiate them from other competitors. So, Dan, broaden this out to the broader EV space then. Who else are the winners this year? Is that the newer players like Lucid and Rivian, can they ramp up, get their production right? Or do you think it's the legacy automakers like Ford and GM that are going to be providing competition for Tesla? Yeah, I think it's the 313 area code. I think you look at Ford and GM specifically. I think those are ones that could really see a re-rating in the stock. They have the distribution. You got the vertical integration. Everything Farley's done at Ford. And I think what Mary will start to do you know, over at GM. You look at Rivian, it's been one of our favorite pure plays, but it all comes down to scale. And, and that's why when, when we look at this quarter, the reason I call it a trophy case, given the chip shortage, what Tesla's able to do, despite some of the shortages and battery component shortages, it, it, it's really off the charts. And I think it just shows you'll have competition across the board, comes down to scale. And that's why Tesla, I think, continues to be a stock that could re-rate further potentially $30 of earnings power by 2025.